Welcome to the podcast. Today, I am with Paul Herons from Blockchain Ireland. Paul, you're very welcome. Thanks very much. Um, I suppose, first of all, I would ask you, just to give us a little bit of a background about yourself, Paul, please. Well, um, I suppose I came into the technology space in uh, the late 90s. Um, I, I was actually uh, studying again as a mature student and uh, bought myself a PC. And being a poor student, I had to learn how to fix it. So um, I, uh, I, I got a good grounding in, in basic IT and uh, almost by accident then ended up going into uh, web development and uh, then networks and security. So at the same time, I had actually developed an interest in writing and journalism. And I began writing a few technical articles and um, everything from games reviews to kind of business software and things like that. And um, then uh, through uh, working with different organizations, um, I uh, spoke to uh, friends who said that, that um, a particular position was open and I became editor of what was then Computer Scope magazine, uh, which later became TechPro. So essentially it was the, the IT professional journal uh, in Ireland for a long time and I spent 15 years as editor of that. So um, I went out on my own recently and uh, I provide content strategy and services um, back into the tech industry now. And uh, part of that then is working with the uh, network um, blockchain Ireland around uh, advancing knowledge and adoption of blockchain and uh, distributed ledger technologies in Ireland. Fantastic. So um, crypto is something you've, you're obviously into. I suppose I'll ask you the personal question of do you personally invest into cryptocurrencies? I haven't as yet, no. Um, to be honest, I, I, I suppose I take the journalistic stance insofar as um, to speculate in it might uh, alter my objectivity when writing about it. So um, even though I've, I've written quite a bit for um, even a couple of sort of analyst and uh, crypto market outlets, um, I haven't actually uh, invested yet. And... Would you invest into other asset classes? Um, yes, I suppose I would for the simple reason that uh, two of my uh, sort of outside loves uh, being old watches and old motorbikes, um, uh, things like NFTs are increasingly being used almost like authentication certificates for high value items um, like, uh, you know, um, everything from classic cars and, and uh, things like that through to, uh, you know, designer handbags and, and uh, pieces of couture and, and, and that kind of thing. So um, places like Sotheby's uh, are starting to use those um, in, in relation to these high value items. So I could certainly see in the future as a result of those kind of uh, interests coming together, um, I, I could see myself owning um some kind of, of digital asset or at the very least an NFT related to a real world item. Very good. Um, tell us a little bit about, about Blockchain Ireland. Please. Well, um, Blockchain Ireland started in about 2015 and essentially it, it was a group of people who were trying to sort of pool their resources in terms of, of um, of gathering knowledge and resources around it. And it was really a very broad thing from uh, people in public services, in government departments, in, um, in, in some of the state agencies and things like that. And as they um, brought kind of things together and, and shared their knowledge, they, they began to formalize it a bit more. So um, kind of flash forward to about 2019 and um, it, it was set up on, on a more formal organization. So there is now a, a steering group and then there are a number of interest groups um, or, or working groups underneath that to, to represent different interest areas. So there's uh, enterprise uh, developer, um, there's uh, startups, um, and that's actually been amended recently to startups in Web3. Um, and then there is the um, skills, education and innovation group. 
there's a, a legal and regulatory group and uh, we're actually in the process of standing up a, an NFT and digital assets uh, working group as well. So essentially it's, it's primarily a volunteer group um, insofar as uh, everybody donates their time uh, for, for free. Um, but we do have an annual event week, um, wh which is coming up shortly. And uh, we, we take sponsorship in on that so that we can provide as much um, free access to the sessions as we possibly can. So uh, the, the 2019, I believe, was the first event week. Um, and then uh, last year, we did an exclusively digital um, uh, presentation where we had more than 60 um, uh, online sessions in three tracks. And uh, this year, we're hoping for at least uh, a hybrid session in it. But Blockchain Ireland really is, is just about promoting the understanding and adoption of blockchain and DLT uh, in, in Ireland. So it's about bringing together um, all aspects of the community and the ecosystem. So the, uh, the, the corporates, uh, right down to the entrepreneurs and the startups, the developers, the business people, the venture capitalists, everybody, along with education and government as well, because the regulatory environment for this is, is vitally important. And as you know, is, is quite fluid in, in so far as different countries are doing different things. Then you have European level um, uh, activity as well. And it, it takes quite a bit to understand how it all trickles down and, and uh, applies locally. But it has not been any kind of bar on uh, activity here. And one of the things that we do in Blockchain Ireland is we, we have um, primarily online monthly meetings whereby we try and bring um, experts and people in the field together to, to talk about it. And we take a very use case driven approach with that. We put as many people who are doing um, proper uh, business with technology in it. So say for example, uh, we, we had one where um, bloodstock sales was uh, based on a blockchain system for fractionalization of ownership. Um, there was another one where uh, a craft beer maker was using it for um, uh, um, authentication of ingredients and supply chain assurance and you know examples like that and there's any number of applications for it and really uh, it's, it's, it's showing the utility and the usefulness of blockchain technologies outside of cryptocurrency. So we, we don't ignore what's going on in cryptocurrency and digital currencies and all that kind of thing, but it's it's about understanding the wider applications for blockchain um, in, in, in business and public services as well. Awesome. And, and what, what are they? Could you expand on them? Like, where do you see it going? Absolutely. Well, we'll, we'll say in, in, in public services uh, uh, in particular, um, the identity management element uh, of, of blockchain um, are hugely beneficial. So um, things like self-sovereign identity management, um, allowing people to control their own information and how that is made available to public services and how public services can use it is a, a, a hugely powerful tool. So um, there are certain uh, places, obviously Estonia is always held up as the, the digital services poster child, but again, for, for good reason. But uh, there are other countries as well, say Slovenia uh, is, is doing um, good work there as well. They have a system called SI chain, and they're uh, among the first to use some of the European Union um, public blockchain infrastructure funding uh, to create sandboxes and test spaces to allow uh, companies to test how they would apply these te technologies for public services. So that, that's um, that's one thing. But but also the fact that um, sort of in the future, more and more government and public services are going to have to be delivered digitally. So essentially allowing um, uh, elements of the kind of security the um, accessibility and immutability um, features of blockchain to underpin those services is is a, a big advantage as well. So it just it it um, it actually provides a very strong, secure, uh, but transparent basis for the kinds of services that people are going to need um, 
delivered digitally um, in the future, as well as all the, 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 the business applications then as well. So um, all of the benefits in terms of things like decentralized finance and um, microfinancing, things like that. A big thing is um, uh, energy 4.0. So as we all um, uh, move towards things like um, uh, citizen generation, whereby you might have a small wind turbine or uh, solar panels on, on your, um, your house, uh, being able to feed back energy to the grid. Um, the, the, a lot of people are saying that blockchain is the ideal basis to allow that kind of uh, two-way flow in future energy grids as well. So again, it's it's um, the the mission of Blockchain Ireland is really about bringing those use cases uh, to light, having the people talk about them, explore them, uh, you know, describe how they work, how they came to it, and um, just showing that utility uh, outside of people's um, understanding, which which might have been introduced via something like Bitcoin or Ethereum or some other uh, cryptocurrency. Sure. Um, with your experience then, would you have any direction or advice to anyone seeking to get involved to work within blockchain industry or Web 3.0 or any, any particular paths that you'd... Well, the, the, the one thing I would say is that um, it, it, it all depends on what direction you're coming from. So say for example, um, if, if, if you are a developer, uh, there are very specific things you, you, you can do in terms of increasing your education and, and uh, your, your sort of technical exposure to these things. Um, because it's, all, uh, it, it's, it's almost all open source or um, popular platforms, um, there's a lot of documentation out there that you can simply go and read uh, around these things. Um, so some of the big platform providers um, have have very good resources in that way, and and it's it's almost all free. So um, then of course you know the, there there are commentators and uh, there are sort of gurus in the area, so that's always good to go to as well. Um, there are some good outlets uh, in terms of news. Um, so we we do a, a kind of an aggregating um, thing on our, our website, uh, blockchainireland.ie, where we just take a, a kind of a couple of, of headline news stories and we'll just kind of uh, take the, the, the snippet value from them and then link back to them. So places like Cointelegraph and um, uh, sites like that have good sort of aggregation for, for news just in the whole uh, crypto area so and again there, there are kind of crypto market analysts um, and, and sites uh, emerging as well and quite a lot of them um, in Ireland so um, there's lots of, of good information out there so depending on the direction you want to come from um, there, there's there's plenty of resources out there there, there are also um, educational resources as well so if you want to look at the likes of ICT Skillnet they run regular courses too, um, often uh, either free or heavily subsidized to get people in and give them a good grounding and a basis then to, to explore from there. If you're coming at it from the pure business side, um, you know, people like yourselves are, are, are actually putting out quite a lot of good quality information there as well. Um, and, and again, uh, say on, on one of our recent uh, monthly meetings for, for Blockchain Ireland, we had... Um, uh, an expert who had come from training uh, chartered accountants um, on advanced use of, of uh, Excel. And she has now pivoted almost entirely to uh, blockchain, Web3 and, and uh, crypto um, for those as well. So there's, there's lots of, of resources out there and it really depends on the direction you're coming from. Um, we, we even had another one whereby uh, a, a guy who works for LinkedIn has spun out now and set up an agency using NFTs um, for marketing. So he'll work with your company to essentially allow you to exploit NFTs um, as, as part of your existing marketing plan. So again, th there's, th there's quite a lot of informal resources out there to get you up to speed so that you can narrow your focus depending on which direction you're coming from and then target the specifics that you're looking for. But uh, as, as much of a kind of a wild west as there might feel uh, about it, 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 it's beginning to formalize, it's beginning to specialize and um, th there, there are definitely resources out there. So one, one thing I would plug and, and I'll kind of come on 
onto this a little bit in, in, in Blockchain Ireland Week specifically, but we do have one session in there, um, which is specifically a panel discussion on um, how to get a job in crypto. So, you know, what, what, what to do, what to look for, how to, uh, how to sort of arrange your experience to, uh, to, to make yourself um, attractive to, uh, to employers there. And the one thing I would say is there are lots of jobs um, in this area because, uh, again, recruitment in this area is difficult. You know, nobody has uh, five years technical experience in this so you know, it's 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 about people who have credible technical experience uh, and and are willing to uh, to learn and and make the uh, the transition. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, I'll we'll chat a little bit about um, blockchain Ireland Week in a second. I wanted to ask a little bit. Some Bitcoiners have very strong opinions about blockchain versus Bitcoin, and it's almost like there's a lot of friction involved in it. That, that it should be all about Bitcoin and blockchain isn't important. Um, can you explain that is, why that is, or, or your position on, on that, please, Paul? Um, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised at that because uh, from, from where I'm sitting uh, in, in terms of, of looking at the value of blockchain technologies uh, entirely divorced from cryptocurrency, um, I, I would say Bitcoin or, or sorry, I would say blockchain as a technology is probably up there along with virtualization. It will become a foundational layer in a whole new generation of applications and services. Now, the only problem is in five years time, I'm not sure we're going to be talking about or, or, or we're going to be using the term blockchain because it will simply be an enfolded layer in so many of these things. So in the same way that we talk about cloud computing now, and we don't talk about virtualization, Bitcoin, or sorry, <laughs> blockchain is probably going to disappear in a similar way. It will simply become um, an integrated technology that enables a whole new uh, realm of, um, of directions for applications and services. So. I would say blockchain has the potential to be bigger than Bitcoin in terms of uh, its utilization in the next five to 10 years. Sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Blockchain Ireland Week, please? Well, Blockchain Ireland Week is, is the annual event week that we run that kind of brings together everything that we're trying to do for um, uh, furthering the the knowledge and understanding of uh, um, blockchain in in ireland so it's it's really a focus for the the community it's a, a showcase and it's a, a a sort of a dissemination point whereby we get the experts in to to talk about it so i'll just give you a kind of a a, a quick run through um we're 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 opening on monday the uh 30th of May. So it's, it's, we, we, we call it a week, but it's, it's a, a fairly intensive Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then we finish out with a, a kind of a social evening on the Wednesday evening. But we're, we're very lucky to have uh, um, the Minister for Finance, uh, Pascal Donahue, is going to open it for us again, this time in person. He was, he was uh, digital last year. Um, so obviously that's, that's going to be a, a, a highlight, but really what we're trying to do is um, put as many different um, experts, commentators, um, uh, public service and um, uh, commercial world people um, out there, both in terms of, of sort of keynote presentations and panel discussions, because we, we really find that uh, facilitating discussion is, is a really important part of, of um, uh, developing understanding in the technology. Uh, so, say for example, we'll, we'll have um, uh, one of our first panels will be blockchain as infrastructure uh, of the new economy. So as the digital economy develops, blockchain will become a very important part of how all of that is, uh, is enabled. So um, we're, we're going to have speakers from uh, Algorand Foundation. Uh, Director of Engineering for um, Block Damon. We're going to have the government CIO Barry Lowry. Uh, we'll have people from Hyperledger and the Linux Foundation. So it, it's uh, just trying to bring as many perspectives as possible in on it, and and we 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 use that model um, throughout. So we're going to have panels on NFTs. We're going to have panels on uh, the crypto sector skills gap. 
um, and, and how we tackle that. So we're going to have uh, Donald Travers from the IDA, uh, Dr. Irina Tal from um, DCU, um, and we're going to have um, speakers from the, the uh, TUD. And again, just trying to explore how we develop that talent pipeline, how we make it attractive for people, and um, essentially how we uh, evolve the needs and, and the, the capability of the current um, institutions to make sure that students can either transition into this or take it up um, um, from the start. So uh, on, on uh, th that's all on the first day. Um, on uh, day two, then, uh, we're going to have, um, uh, again, the, just the, the, the mix of uh, keynotes and, um, and uh, panels, but a very important speaker is Jerry Cross, uh, Director of Financial Regulation, Policy and Risk with the Central Bank of Ireland. So again, that's going to be a very important session to, uh, to, to get the Central Bank view um, and to, to understand what they're doing in the area, because again, uh, the, the regulatory framework for all of this is, is going to be key. So uh, again, part, part of what we're trying to do here is to show how Ireland has a, a really good opportunity to um, essentially become a, a blockchain center of excellence and uh, just the, the, the benefits from that in terms of attracting the investment, attracting the support, and then having the talent pipeline there to feed it and the, the, the industry that can result. So as we have seen from the, the, the social media companies here, as we've seen from the cloud computing services that are based here, um, if you put the right structures in place, the industry will develop and it will thrive. And we have that opportunity with blockchain. In fact, probably a, a better opportunity than, than, uh, than, than previous. So the key thing is that uh, all of this is free. Um, all we require is a registration because we're trying to build a network of people um, interested in this. So if you go to blockchainireland.ie uh, and uh, from the front page there, you'll see it. But one of the key things that we have as well is that we're trying to encourage as much of the community element as possible. So most of the Wednesday program will be given over to uh, community events around the country. So these are events that we're not running ourselves, but are, are um, uh, relevant on, on the overall theme. And and um, we're, we'll, we'll, uh, we have an event submission form that you can see from the front page as well. And we'll uh, curate the uh, listings there and we'll help promote those and, and drive people to them. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's a big thing. It's fairly ambitious. And uh, we're, we're hoping to, uh, to get quite a few people there. So we're going to round out on the Wednesday evening then uh, with a party atmosphere. And we're going to have a, a student NFT competition. Um, and we're going to have a, a few awards as well in terms of uh, recognizing um, contributions and achievements uh, in the area. So that, in a nutshell, is uh, Blockchain Ireland Week. Sounds good. I'm excited for it. Um, my, um, what was the date of that, that again? That's Monday, the 30th of May from uh, 9.30. It's going to be in the Alex Hotel uh, in Dublin. And uh, we will be probably using our um, ICT Skillnet, uh, uh, who is our, uh, our operational sponsor, uh, will probably be using their YouTube channel to, um, to, to do digital broadcast as well. Um, and uh, possibly um, uh, Zoom sessions uh, too for, for, uh, for digital broadcast. So we're, we're, we're trying to do, uh, make it as accessible as possible for people uh, if, if they can't be there in person. That's brilliant, Paul. Um, my fun question is always 2030, what do you think the price of Bitcoin will be? Now, because you've told me you don't own any Bitcoin, maybe I could pivot the question to why, if that's a fair question to ask. Well, uh, I'd say back in the very early days of uh, Bitcoin, uh, I, I, I did some coverage about some students um, who were doing a project to mine it. And really the focus of their project was more around the, um, the architecture of the, the mining solution rather than uh, the, because the, 
essentially the complexity of what they were doing was, was was sort of best applied to this at the time. And they thought they might just capitalize on the bit of, of, of buzz that was around it at the time. And I believe that they actually did mine uh, one um, Bitcoin successfully um, as, as part of it. I, 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 I've actually looked back through my notes and I, I, I haven't managed to, to contact them since. But, um, but I, I think since then, um, I've, I've, I've regarded it with a journalistic eye and consequently as it rose in value and I, I spoke to different experts um, say for example one uh, Irish expert who, who um, is, is very much on the, the developmental side uh, was convinced um, but I would have spoken to him in 2019 and he was convinced that more or less by the end of 2020 that it would probably hit close to a hundred thousand dollars. Now it never did. It peaked at what sixty something. Sixty-seven, I think. 60 yeah, months, yeah. yeah. Um, now, obviously, they couldn't have foreseen then both the pandemic and then the geopolitical instability that that um, that is uh, is here now. But even so, um, it 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 seems to be sort of stabilizing um, in in or around its current value. Um, I, I would take a punt and say that it it will probably increase gradually in value. Um, 2030 is probably a bit of a stretch to see to see that far, but um, I, I would say that it 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 will um, stabilize and increase slowly in value. You may not see the big jumps that um, that you'd seen previously, but I think as as its wider utility. Um, becomes apparent, um, not necessarily as people think of traditional fiat currencies, but uh, and in, in terms of a store and transmission of value, but in terms of a new type of transaction of an agreed value, I think Bitcoin is, is going to come into its own. So consequently, I think it'll become less volatile but it will grow more kind of incrementally and possibly predictably uh, in, in the next few years. Okay. And will you ever choo choose to own it then? <laughs> I wonder. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't own it as an investment. I, 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 I wouldn't see it in that way. I would see it more in terms of um, having a store of it to to use it for what it was intended, as opposed to to speculate on its value. So, uh, you know, say for example, um, you know, if if uh, as as was predicted in some areas, if you know something spectacular like the the um, the the that amazing festival in in the California desert, uh, if 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 that went exclusively Bitcoin for admission, you know, something like that, the, the thing. If, if 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 certain things were only available through Bitcoin, then it would certainly make sense to have some fractionalized store of it there to uh, to to use for that. But to be honest, I wouldn't ever see myself um, investing in it speculatively. Uh, I, I, it's it's just it's not something I I would I would generally envisage myself. It's not something I would do in other realms. Um, and and to be honest. I don't think I would see Bitcoin's future um, as being able to change my, my habit on that. Okay, you'll stick to the motorbikes, which you can't fault. Uh, well, uh, you see, there, there, there are certain motorbikes, yeah, that um, if you can buy now and store, you know, nostalgia is a powerful value multiplier. <laughs> Fantastic. Paul, I want to thank you for giving us your time today and come on to talk about Blockchain Ireland. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And blockchain, it's been amazing. Yeah, thanks very much, Paul. And I'll see you at Blockchain Ireland Week. I hope to do. Thanks very much.